Hi, I'm James Blackman. I'm from RCI Wireless and Enterprise IoT Insights. We're here at MWC 2019. I'm joined by Dan Mondor, who's Chair and Chief Executive of Insego. Thanks for joining us, Dan. Thank you. Now, uh, t can you tell us a little bit about what Insego is doing within this 5G ecosystem? Yes. This is a 5G market. This is a 5G show, essentially. Yeah. You've been there through every stage, every generational upgrade. Give us a flavor of what Insego is doing now. Yeah. Well, we're, we're starting off basically as we've done in all generations of wireless technology, which is taking a leadership position in providing uh, our customers, predominantly uh, service providers, with the type of products they need to get going with 5G in their network. So it consists of uh, mobile hotspots. That enables the mobile use cases applications as the 5G networks get going. You can still use all of your current devices with our hotspot as the, mm -hmm. if you will, mobile gateway. And the other thing that we're doing, so that's the mobile application is for fixed wireless in-home. We build the technology into our router for in-home applications. Um, working with the infrastructure guys, Nokia Ericsson, and now a number of customer mm -hmm. deployments. Uh, Verizon in the US, uh, TELUS and Op Optus in mm -hmm. Australia, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we have, I think it's around 20 other engagements around the world. As the service providers get going, get ready mm -hmm. for trials and deployment of 5G. And through, through these trials and deployments, what, have, what, have you, what has Insego kind of found with, with the 5G testing? Yeah, uh, I think the, what we found is the performance is much better than we expected. Um, for both the so-called millimeter wave, which is very high bandwidth, high performance, as well as the lower band sub six gigahertz, which is uh, arguably an easier type of solution set from a propagation point of view. But we've done a number of demonstrations that are way more than two gigabits and this other terminology latency low latency sub 10 milliseconds mm. so you can get real-time applications and we've done a number of those in various events uh, around the world mm -hmm. and we're hearing that there is a there is a migration from from you know uh, uh, home broadband into uh, 5g 5g kind of hotspots and this kind of stuff in the home can you talk around that and what you're finding is that happening are we finding that already that is happening, that okay. is happening. Um, in our travels and our engagements around the world, we're finding some operators want to start off with the mobile hotspot applications as their initial 5G service offering. Others are starting immediately with fixed wireless for the consumer and home gateway. All the untethered mobile uh, wireless uh, mm -hmm. broadband distribution in the home, voice data, video. So it's a very powerful solution set, and if you will, it's. Uh, their ability to compete with predominant broadband providers such as cable operators mm -hmm. around the world. And IoT is a big part of everything these days, it's part yeah. of your strategy, yes. can you comment on that and what you're doing there? Yeah, so if you take a step back and think of what Insego is, it's an IoT device to cloud company, so intelligent devices, uh, cloud solutions that provides all the, all the analytics and intelligence and now powered by 5G. So we have uh, a lineup of IoT products for things like industrial gateways, uh, enterprise vertical applications, and then we have our other technology which is branded MiFi. Um, uh, so we have MiFi as the brand 5G hotspots and we have a brand called Skyus which is our IoT uh, industrial gateways. And all of those together perform a device to cloud from an appliance point of view, and then the, the cloud solutions mm -hmm. that, uh, provide the intelligence. And, and all of those together, I mean, we're combining a number of technologies here, aren't we? Yes. You know, connectivity layer, there's 5G, we've got, you know, uh, as well as IoT, and then you've got intelligence on top of that. Yes. You know, what are you seeing coming up in terms of use cases and this kind of stuff? Well, there's some really interesting applications, uh, as, again, beyond, uh, shall we say, the consumer. In the enterprise side of the, the equation, it's things like asset tracking. And one of the markets that's very, very interesting and, and emerging is the market sector we refer to as aviation. And, and what we do specifically there is the so-called under the wing assets, ground service equipment. Mm -hmm. um, it really is in need of modernization to know where all these high value assets are. Are they being utilized? Uh, if you have 25 fuel trucks, are you actually finding only 20 of them are being mm -hmm. used? Um, so you can get that kind of intelligence 
uh, integrated into the operations in the airport in that mm -hmm. instance and understand where all these assets are, uh, all the information on mm -hmm. speed, battery, fuel levels, turning radius, staying within the lanes, going outside, <laughs> parked and stopped for three hours when it should be should not be. Mm -hmm. um, so there's all kinds of intelligence uh, comes from that and the business case, the ROI to the airport or the airline or the ground service equipment is amazing. Fantastic. Dan, look, thanks for joining us. And, uh, Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you.